So um, the Lord said, here he is, the man of whom I spoke, and he shall reign over my people. And uh, verse 19, he says, I'm the seer. Go up with, uh, before me to the high place, and you shall eat with me to me, uh, today, and tomorrow I'll let you go and tell you all that's within your heart. But as for your donkeys, they were lost three days ago. Do not be anxious for them, for they have been found. And um, I just think that's wonderful that just as an aside, by the way, the donkeys. And he didn't, mention, he didn't even mention the donkeys. I mean, it's a pure revelation. It's a pure confirmation that the Lord's about to do something absolutely remarkable. It's for the donkeys, they've been found. Three days ago, it's, it's specific. And it's almost a, a, as if um, our whole prophetic, I mean, we're, we're walking more prophetic probably than any other time in history, but we still have to get to the level that that's already been released, and we haven't seen that fully released uh, as it should be. I mean, this is a real specific word, and he gets very specific as we go. And um, so Saul took them to the hall, they had a banquet hall, and had them sit in the place of honor among those who were invited, and there were about 30 persons. And Saul said to the cook, bring me that portion of meat that I set aside I think that all, I think that all is, is just wonderful. It just shows so much of the Lord's character that, and that this is him. He's prepared it all. And these guys haven't eaten for quite a while, and so uh, they ran out of bread, and so they sat down to an amazing steak dinner. And, uh, but it's about the honor. He puts him in a place of honor, and, and God does that when he calls you, and you have to hold out for that. You'll never be satisfied. When I was uh, first preparing to to preach and and to I, I desperately wanted to preach, all my friends wanted to preach and and I remember listening to them and they would tell me how they would call a church just at random and say, "Could I come and preach in your church?" And they had little business cards made up with their name on it and, and their phone number and that they you know maybe a sword crossed the Bible or something like that to um, present themselves as a preacher. And I wanted to preach desperately. I had all this revelation that was coming in and no real outlet for it. And I, as I talked it over with Jesus, he said, you're not to do that. And then this prophet came to me and, the, and he started speaking to me and says, I will open doors for you and you never have to invite yourself to preach. You never have to ask for, ask for opportunities to preach. I will create them and I'll lead you by the invitations that you get. And I thought that was really interesting. So even though I was fully loaded, primed and loaded, ready to preach, I really wanted to preach, nothing happened. But the Lord knew that, he knew the struggle. And so he spoke to me through a prophet that he'd open the doors. Well, the doors that he opened for me, I would never have chosen. I would never, they, they weren't the doors that I would have picked. I would have picked the churches that were kind of like us or the people that were kind of like us. Uh, almost all the invitations that came in over the next year or two were from denominational churches that uh, weren't really open to the Holy Spirit and they would invite me to come. And that's been the pattern of my whole life. And I remember my, um, uh, a real close friend at the time, he said, why are you going among these people? Like, God's kind of shaking the, the, the dust off his feet with these people, and here you are going in among, the, among them. And he said, well, you know, like that was, there was something wrong with that. And I said, well, the Lord's invited me. I mean, these people are asking me to come and speak. And they, they really didn't have much to do with me after that because it looked like I wasn't going in the right circles in the right direction. But it's been one of the most fulfilling parts of my whole call in ministry is I love getting among people who don't know, but who would go for new truth and new experience if they just had someone come and teach them. And it's been one of the features of my calling and my passion all these years, but I would never have chosen that. I would never have figured that out. I just watched the invitations come in and realized there's a pattern to this. And so, 
I re desperately wanted to preach. And one of the first places the Lord opened for me to preach regularly, I was getting all this revelation at home. In fact, that for the first five years, I had such a downpouring of revelation. It's taken the last 30 some years just to write it out. And this was happening to me and I took that as a, <clears throat> you know, that the Lord wanted me to share all this revelation. I didn't realize it would take time for that to happen. <clears throat> so the first real invitation to come and speak at a place regularly was a nursing home. And the people couldn't understand anything I was saying and they just couldn't receive it. All I could really tell them, I'm getting revelation at home, but all I could really tell them is Jesus loves you. But it was in that nursing home and, and I did that for years and I went there faithfully and fulfilled that. That's where God gave me a pastor's heart. That's where he gave me a vision of his heart, how to really love people. He taught me how to communicate in ways I would never have taught if I was free to teach the way I wanted to teach in, in my, own, my own church among the adults. He put me down in the basement among the children. I didn't want to be a Sunday school teacher or anything like that. But that's where he put me to help cultivate my call, help give me a, a different kind of heart. And so if you follow the Lord, it may look different than what you expect. And I've had opportunity to do the kind of teaching I like to do now, but the, the formation that God was after really had to happen in those other places. So you have to follow the Lord. Amen.